This is a demo lesson for an introductory biology class at Moore Park College. Students will be familiar with the central dogma of biology, which describes how DNA contains genetic information that codes for RNA, which in turn codes for proteins that form the structures and perform functions in the body. In this lesson, we will discuss with students heterologous protein expression in bacteria and in mammalian cells, one of the technologies that applies cell biology to form useful products. My early career was in research science, conducting experiments, analyzing the results, and reporting those results. I found the work intellectually stimulating, but often laborious. One task that was particularly laborious heterologous expression, expression of proteins in an organism that does not naturally carry the gene for that protein. Why go through so much trouble to produce large amounts of a protein in an organism to which that protein is not native? Proteins have immense research, therapeutic, and commercial value. Amgen, headquartered in nearby Thousand Oaks, is a major producer of biologic medicine, medicine that is manufactured involving living organisms. How can we involve living organisms in manufacturing medicine? Several factors determine the type of expression system used to produce proteins, and the process of expressing proteins requires several steps. We'll go through one simple and classic example, insulin. Insulin is a protein our bodies, uses, our bodies use to regulate sugar levels. The bodies of people who have diabetes have trouble producing it themselves, but we can inject insulin as medicine. To get enough, we need to use, we can use a bacteria, but in a multi-step process. We begin by isolating a cell of interest, cells that contain the insulin gene. We isolate RNA from those cells and use re reverse transcription to make cDNA of the gene of interest. Now that we have the gene of interest, we need to get it into bacteria. To, to do this, we need a vector. A plasmid is a simple vector. We can get cDNA into a plasmid using restriction enzymes to cut and DNA ligase to bind the pieces together. The next step is to get the plasmid into bacteria so it can be expressed. One common way of doing this is through electroporation. Bacteria is subject to an electric shock that creates holes in the membrane that allow DNA to enter. You must select the bacteria that have taken up the vector, that is the positive bacteria. By growing large quantities of this bacteria, you will get the protein of interest in large quantities.